So, far away Nisha, what's your favourite large fish? Hmm. You could just say shark. I was, I was going to say tuna because I like a good tuna mayo sandwich. I'm still freaked out by how big tuna is and how small the can they come is. I don't get that. Ernest Hemingway is one of the most celebrated and influential authors of the 20th century, something we're going to completely ignore in favour of talking about his contributions to the world of fishing, the, specifically the way he pioneered fishing for tuna with a machine gun. All right, already this is sounding bizarre as usual, mm -hmm. so what is this about? Well, Ernest Hemingway is like, unequivocally best known for his work as an author. He was also a very avid and committed fisherman, and he landed numerous record-breaking sofa-sized fish during his lifetime. and was in fact so well known for his fishing prowess in Cuba, where he did a lot of his big game fishing, that there is a fishing tournament there named after him. A tournament I feel compelled to mention was won by Ernest Hemingway for the first three years that it ran, meaning that during his lifetime on three separate occasions, Ernest Hemingway entered a fishing competition named after him and then walked away with a prize of his own face on it. Imagine the registration for that. So what's your criteria thinking you belong in the Ernest Hemingway fishing competition? It just like points at the sign that's got his face on it. It's like that great moment in Futurama where Fry gets parasites and he goes into his own body and says, under what authority do you command me? And Fry just points at a sign and it just says, <laughs> yeah. the known universe with a picture of him doing the exact same pose. Who controls this bowel? Who wants to know? <gasps> It's just the thing of, though, under what authority? It's like the known universe. Like, uh, excuse me, like, who the fuck are you to think you can enter this competition? Oh, I'm the guy it's named after. And we've discussed this briefly in another video, but I really enjoy the stories told by celebrities when people just don't know who they are. And there's a couple of really famous stories about this happening, perhaps the most famous being that Charlie Chaplin once lost a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest because he was told that he didn't do the walk right. And then Dolly Parton, yeah. similarly, lost a Dolly Parton lookalike contest to a drag queen. The one that I like the most, though, is because the guy looks so distinct, is the guy from The Prodigy. I forget his name, but uh, he's very distinctive looking. It's just after the video Firestarter came out. His name's Keith Flint. Oh, Keith Flint, that's it, yes. And he talks about a story of, I was just walking down the street and a guy drove past and went, look at you, you think you're the Firestarter? And he just went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Actually... saw that <laughs> That's, that's so bad, but we can move on uh, to talk about how though Hemingway pioneered a new way to fish for tuna using guns. So what is this about him using guns to fish for tuna? Well, Hemingway was well known in the world of big game fishing for landing especially pristine tuna, which is noted as being very, very difficult due to the fact that tuna are very large, very powerful fish that are hard to even catch in the first place. And owing to their size and power, they thrash around a lot. And most of the time when dragging them onto a boat, they will injure themselves in some way. And when they're injured and they're thrashing around, they're spreading blood in the water, which as you might imagine is the perfect recipe to attract sharks, which will then nibble on the fish because it's stuck, it can't move. Uh, resulting in what is known as apple coring, which is when the fish has had lots of bites taken out of it and can result in you losing a competition uh, because sharks don't exactly take small bites. So in addition to the fish not being as pristine, it can weigh a lot less and there are people who've lost big game fishing competitions because their tuna got apple cored by a shark. And this did happen to Hemingway on several occasions until he devised a way of scaring off the sharks, by which I mean he would fire wildly into the water when they arrived with a machine gun. Like, just if you imagine you're on land and you look out, you see this guy just shooting <laughs> Just into, into the water as <laughs> like shark fins are around him and he's got a fishing rod. Well, that's like a manly ass image right there. And um, despite sounding quite crude, it, like, this method did require a degree of finesse because uh, shooting the sharks too much could result in them themselves starting to bleed and thrash around, which attracted even more sharks. So while this technique was effective, it could accidentally result in more sharks coming in to steal your catch. Uh, so it required like a very precise amount of bullets. And there are stories of Hemingway getting mad that people were shooting too wildly and himself just pulling out a pistol and then just like clean headshotting the shark. And his favoured method for doing that was to press the gun directly against the shark's head. Just for a moment now imagine the image of Ernest Hemingway slowly placing a gun to a shark's head and executing it. God. Fucking hell. Whoa, whoa, we've been attacked by sharks, what do we do? Hang on, I've got this, and he pulls out a gun. It's like, what are you gonna do? And then leans over it, yeah. like, to the shark, and it's like, oh my God, what are you doing? It's like, oh, you've got a gun, so you can, like, a long distance weapon, no, but I need to fight your hand to hand. 
I've got no choice. I need to fight with shark hand to hand. It's like, fuck it. It reminds me of like, the film Deep Blue Sea. Like, one of my favourite shark movies besides Jaws. And it's like got LL Cool J in it where he's fighting the shark. When he's fighting the shark in the kitchen and he hides in the oven. <laughs> and then the shark turns the oven on. Oh god, it's just a... I forgot about that film. Oh my god. It's just so good though, like the idea of someone like squaring up to a shark and fighting it hand to hand. It's great. <laughs> it's like um, I've talked about it before, but I'm gonna talk about it again because it's one of my like my favourite scenes in a film. And it is in the film Dog Soldiers, where the guy fights a werewolf with a frying pan. It's just so good. It's like what this deadly, dangerous creature is. I wanna fucking have it with this pan. Got no chance. So yeah, this this whole thing does sound dangerous to be fair, because you're you know, you're in the sea, you're on a boat, uneven surface. Were there any mm. accidents that happened? Uh there is one notable accident, yes. Uh, and that is when Ernest Hemingway inexplicably accidentally shot himself in both legs at once while trying to quick scope a shark. What and that fuck? to me is amazing. <laughs> like that is a fuck up beyond fuck up since I accidentally shot myself in both legs at once. Hemingway being Hemingway responded to this in typical fashion by penning an article simply titled I shit you not on being shot again <laughs> because that was the second time he'd been shot I think <laughs> so he just wrote an article talking about being shot again 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 <laughs> Jesus what a fucking man fucking Hemingway Far away Nisha, the ending of this video was discussing how Ernest Hemingway accidentally shot both his legs at once. And if you may have noticed, I've got like a little bandage on my thumb. Because I very recently cut the very tip of my thumb off. I saw you post about it on Twitter. I was like, God, what have yeah. you done? <laughs> uh, I was uh, making a wrap. I was cutting some lettuce and I was just being a bit too uh, haphazard with my slicing. And I sliced to the very tip of my thumb and it's, it's fine. It doesn't hurt. Well, it hurts, but it's like it's not going to be a big issue. Like, I didn't get too deep, no like nerve damage or anything like that. I didn't get to the uh, bone. And as you said, I tweeted about it. And I didn't do it for sympathy. I did because I found it quite amusing that about 30 minutes after I'd done this to my thumb, um, I had to record like two and a half hours of Devil May Cry with Lucas. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's going to be a bit difficult to <laughs> yeah. like, play this super difficult character action game when the primary input method for movement has been horribly injured and was wrapped in this huge bandage at the time because I had to have it bandaged up for about five hours till it stopped bleeding. Yeah. And I had to play like Jesus. The Claw because uh, I played a lot of Monster Hunter back in the day. So people, well, they meant like The Claw, which is where you play mm -hmm. with your uh, index finger instead of your thumb. And then later that evening, I also played Smash Bros. Um, and I played with a single Joy-Con. So I played single Joy-Con Smash Bros with online lag. Again, using the claw methodology. <laughs> that's, not, that's just funny to me. Like, it's, 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 yeah. in, I've injured myself and I have to like, you know, find this workaround for it. But something I found like, amusing was just how many people were like, oh, that's not a real injury. What? Have how you encountered this real? before? No, I mean, like when you hurt yourself, you always get the dick measurers coming out, like the two shitters coming yeah. out of like to talk oh. about the way they injured themselves more than you have. Yeah. As if, yeah, like, they your have to injury go, is not they have real. To go, like, yeah, they have to go, like, one so step further. It's like, oh, um, and uh, Lucas summed it up quite well, where it's, uh, when you say you're tired, you'll always get someone yeah. say, you don't know what being tired is. Because when I was on stream that evening, I had people coming in, like, almost bragging about how they'd hurt themselves more. And it's like, human misery is not a competition. And if it was, it's not something you want to be good at. Yeah, I think... Like one last scene which you mentioned was people comparing tiredness. It's like everyone oh, is yeah. different. It was like I got to be on camera and talk about stuff that I'm interested in for a couple hours. It still is quite draining. And, mm -hmm. and I've had that before of like, oh, um, your job's really easy. Because some parts are, because I enjoy it, but there are other parts that are quite draining. Like um, just the constant need to be on, like never really having the ability to like, you know, take time for myself. But um, in regards to like two shitters and people always trying to one up, um, Something I've encountered a lot is when I mention how tall I am. Um, mm. And because I'm like six foot three inches tall. And when I say that, without a doubt, anytime I've ever said it in any online setting, you will always get someone coming in going, yeah, I'm six foot five and it's really tough being tall. <laughs> Every time, without a doubt. <laughs> Every single fucking time. And then the other one is uh, when I was going to the gym a lot more, when gyms were a thing you could go to. Mm -hmm. I, I just 
stop talking about anything I did at the gym because every single time it was mentioned, someone has to come in and just drop that they can lift more than you can. And it's like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> So, Jesus. Why is your personality so combative? <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck, you know, it's ridiculous. Without a doubt, someone out there, when I mentioned I cut my thumbs, I'd probably like, poor diddums, you think it hurts, so you cut your thumb, you try it, and then insert whatever thing they did that really, mm. really hurt, that they think, like, you know, is a personality trait for some reason. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> don't be a dick, folks, and also maybe don't shoot sharks. That doesn't sound very nice. It's a cool story from history, but don't do it now. Sharks are all right. Don't shoot them.